Don Don Global, Global presents, presents the DG Recruit Podcast on everything headhunting and recruitment. Achieve the life and career you envision. What's up, game changers? It's your host, Don Don, founder of Don Don Global, the headhunting and career coaching company helping you achieve the life and career you envision. Okay, y'all, this podcast is going to be very direct and no holds barred because it's time to talk about this no excuses mindset. As a headhunter for other headhunters and agency people, I have heard every single excuse under the sun. I have managed teams both at my previous firm where I worked as well as managed my own team for my own business. And the majority of people that I come across are unfortunately not going to succeed in recruitment because they have too many excuses. If you look down at how they end up where they end up, it's because they have too many excuses. And they're letting those excuses become their way of life, their mode of thinking, and their whole person. This becomes a lifelong issue, which is why you don't meet a lot of millionaires. There are very few people who actually become very successful and have made it regardless and continue to succeed, right? And I get it. No one's perfect. I'm not either. I'm also frustrated at myself for a number of different reasons. I also have wallowed in my own misery. I've also have gotten down in the dumps. But there's one thing that I've never really done, which is not be a top producer. I've never been a poor producer. Other than the year that I was a manager and I wasn't a poor producer, I was a manager that year that was burdened with five really terrible people to manage. Now, again, in a no excuses mindset, what I should have done at that time is leave the management role. I should have noticed the issues early on and rectified the issue, but instead I wallowed and allowed excuses and my status quo to dictate where I was at. So this no excuses mindset is something I want to share with you today, and it hinges upon six different core tenets. So the first one is any excuse, every excuse is not an excuse. So people say, well, I don't like the recruiters that are recruiting for my job. They don't know how to recruit. Well, then fill those jobs yourself. Right. And, and it's like, oh, well, I don't like my manager. OK, well, your manager isn't stopping you from calling clients you can call clients, right? It's all of the excuses that you have is not an excuse. Oh, well, our ATS system sucks. Too bad. <laughs> before ATS, before the internet existed, people had to use paper filing. You know, none of this is an excuse, right? So everyone has an excuse. Well, you know, it's because we have too many meetings. Well, then reject those meetings. Stop going to those meetings, Focus on your work. Oh, well, my boss doesn't let me do that. Well, make them let you do that. Tell them why you refuse to do a certain thing. Go do it. Prove to them that you're bringing in the money and insulate yourself and make yourself a stronger internal political force to be reckoned with, right? So all of these excuses, you can always look at them and say, that's not an excuse, right? Oh, well, other people are being laid off and I'm feeling really nervous right now. That's not an excuse for you not to make calls. That is not an excuse for you not to do deals, Yeah, well, you know, the S&P dropped today. And what am I going to do? Go home and cry in a corner, right? The reality is, is these macroeconomic forces have nothing to do with you picking up the phone and getting a client. So this is, you know, something that you have to really confront is like tough love on yourself. Like, let's be real. Are these real excuses or are you just making things up as you go? Secondly, stop focusing on the negative, Like I said, people just want to focus on the negative as in like they get overly concerned. And I know because I've been there year four of my recruitment career, I was all negativity. And there's no surprise that in year four of my recruitment career, I made just $3,000 more than I made in year one of my recruitment career. And it's because I was just being negative the whole ass year. The whole year, I was like, I hate the people that I manage. Why can't we fire them? My boss is like, well, you're not allowed to because we need to give them more time. I could have just told them right then and there, no, we are firing them now or I quit. Did I have the chutzpah to do so? No. I was just like, whatever. I guess I'm just going to go with it. I was negative. 
that whole fourth year, I was pretty darn negative and I was not focused on what I needed to do, how to position myself first. And that's what I paid for. You know, you look back and you're like, was I the best I could have been that year? Uh, no, I definitely wasn't. I wasn't working as hard as I used to. I just did not like what was happening. I felt very bitter about the management changes and what I was asked to do. What I should have done is quit and go to another agency much sooner than I did. Right. So that was a humongous problem was that I let the thing fester. Right. So stop focusing on the negative. Start focusing on the elements that you can control. What can you control and take action? Rectify those problems. Confront the issue, because if you are not speaking up, then nobody can read your mind. So you have to speak up and advocate for yourself because you care about your own future. If you care about your own future, then you care about the future of your firms. Hopefully your boss will see that and will allow you and support you to get to where you want to go. If they keep pushing you, then your answer is clear. Leave, leave. I wish that's something I personally actually thought of doing instead of waiting till things got even worse. Right. So if you make a decision, make a move, be action oriented, right. Instead of stewing there in the negativity. Number three, recruiting is always a solo sport. Now people keep being like, oh, well, this person, that person, this person, that person, they have nothing to do with you. This is a solo sport. We have rankings and the rankings are for individuals. They're not for entire teams. They're for individuals within a team. You have rankings. Within an organization, you have rankings. It is a solo sport. I don't care what Billy Bob is up to. That has nothing to do with you. I don't care what XYZ person has said to you or how that person might have not been so nice. Screw them. What do they have to do with you? You have an external customer to focus on. That is where you are getting paid. You are getting paid not off of internal politics, but of external production. Get that very clear. You are not making money from your colleagues. Your colleagues don't really matter. You are making money from the external marketplace. And if you cannot find a way that you can monetize the external marketplace, you're again either at the wrong agency where you're relying on all these duds that you just don't see any future of, which again is leave your agency would be a very clear, obvious exit. Or you are in a situation where you yourself are just demotivated and you're looking for others to be the scapegoat. Well, my boss was not very nice to me today. Well, yeah, you didn't really do a good job this month, did you? Right? So it's like you get what you give in this business. Very rarely do you do really, really well and your boss is like an asshole to you. That's unlikely to happen. That goes against their own self-incentive unless you're dealing with an irrational narcissist, which again, don't stew in that negativity. Just go get another job, go somewhere else, right? Take action, take action, take action, take action. So like I said, in this point, recruiting is a solo sport. Do not rely on other people to keep you motivated or make you happy or inspire you. I worked for a year and a half, two years, almost three for a boss that I absolutely detested, absolutely did not respect him. Prior to that, I worked for another boss that I thought he was fiscally incompetent. I thought he was personally a dud when it comes to financial like intelligence, which I cannot respect. I cannot respect a person who pays $4,000 in rent when they're making similar or less than I do. I think it's such a dumb financial move. And what are you going to do? You're going to let, like, let that be the whole existence. No, you're going to ignore that. You're going to understand that you don't like what you're seeing. I had like horrible things happen in the workforce, sexual harassment, rampant drug abuse, like crazy alcoholism issues, horrible t culture. Yet every single year I still produced and progressed and got ahead. It's a no excuses mindset. doesn't matter what, how annoying all of my colleagues were and how rude and annoying and toxic the culture was. My goal was clear, produce, be the top performer. So that's the next one. Be the top performer, be a top biller or bust. If you're not a top biller, just like there is no point. There is no excuse. There just is no nothing. Like you just haven't done the work needed to get somewhere. So why do you have a right to criticize the system when you're not even anywhere in the system? I've met people like this in my old recruiting firm. And in my experience managing people, they wanted to do all these things. They had all these ideas, but what they didn't have was production. If you don't have production, what leg do you have to stand on? 
How can we trust anything coming out of your mouth if your results are dismal, are borderline average to low? How can your voice carry any weight whatsoever when your production is not even ranked at middle to upper level? You know what I mean? Like in this business, you just have no say if you don't have the billings to back it up. Because it's like, how do we know that anything you're saying is correct when factually you are performing at a substandard level, right? So becoming a top pillar is not just for your financial gain. It's for your political and career survival. That's how I saw it from day one. How do you become a top pillar? I'm sorry to say, number five, seven, 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 seven rule. Seven to seven, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week, seven times out of the year. This is a non-negotiable. If you are not a top biller and you're working nine to five, Monday through Friday, when are you ever going to be a top producer? I, I mean that. I genuinely mean that. If you are already not producing above what you should be producing and you're working the minimum hours expected of you, when do you think things are going to change? When do you think life is going to change for you? It's like saying, if you are not saving 70% of what you earn, then how are you ever supposed to have savings when you're saving 10% of what you're supposed to be saving, right? It's just like, you're not doing it enough. That's why it's not working for you. It's not that saving sucks. It's not that the economy is against you. It's like, you're not saving. You're saving at a very dismal low rate. And when you save at that dismal low rate and you, when you don't make financial sacrifices, guess what? Money just doesn't fall out of the sky and hit you over the head into your bank account. You know, these are just factual things that we have to confront. I was not a top biller in my first year by accident. I worked seven days a week. On the weekends, I would go and meet candidates. I would literally spend time to meet these people. Some days to go to Philly and Delaware, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I get home at 9 or 10 p.m. I almost died on the freaking car because of some car accidents that could have happened because I was so tired. Now, that's not the best thing that I would recommend other people to do, but that's a real story that that's what I used to do all the time. Just drive for hours and hours to freaking Princeton, to Boston, to Connecticut. One time I had to go meet a client at Wallingford two hours each way, you know? So this is just what it comes down to. It's hard work. This is hard work. If you think this is a normal job where you can just show up and like collect your check, Think again, this is a production-based role. Until you have a certain volume of pipeline of activity, which is a result of hard work, consistent hard work, then you don't have enough to really get anywhere. And every single month that goes by is another month wasted. So I'd rather sacrifice one month of fun and games with friends and family. I will gladly sacrifice one or two or even three or four or even five or even six, seven, eight, as many months as needed to get to my goal. Rather than just like duke it out nine to five every day thinking that things will change because they will not. If you are already not a top biller, guess what? You need to work harder. And unfortunately, if you can't turn the back, uh, if you can't turn back time, you got to take the advantage of the extra time that you have, which is nice and weekends, right? It's just, this is just not rocket science, right? Elon Musk, like, I, I know everyone doesn't like Elon, but the dude's like freaking works a lot. You got to give that to him. He still, he works a lot more than the average person does. The last point here is if you think that leaving your agency is going to solve all your problems, think again. The problem that you have where you currently are is still going to be a problem when you leave, if not worse. I talk to a lot of recruiters that want to move agencies and they give me some bullshit excuses as to why they want to leave. And I'm like, uh, when you go to a new agency, that's going to be an even bigger problem. Like the fact that you have to spend more time developing clients and then that's stressful. That's going to be the same issue when you go to a new company. And not only that, you're not going to have the political uh, luxury of coasting in your like you do in your current role. In your current role, at least you can coast because your boss is used to you, knows you, has to deal with you, and they will put up with it. But when you move agencies, they will not put up with it. They absolutely will 
not. You will not be given any benefit of the doubt. You will have to start from ground zero, reestablish yourself. You will have to work seven, 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 seven again just to set yourself up as a good new hire. What are you going to do? Go to a new company and work nine to five again? No, like that's not a good look when you get somewhere new and you're trying to establish your business and you just clock out at five every day. I don't think that's a good look. So the problem in this business is that if you don't recognize that this is blood labor, like this is blood labor, none of this comes easy. No one's over there doing 50, 60 K fees and just chilling. No, they're working. They're working a lot more than you think they are. And if not, they put the work in earlier in their career, which got them much more efficient and knowledgeable. So when they're on the phone, they get a lot more out of that call that under, that, than other people do. So again, a problem here is going to be a problem there too. Just because you skip agencies, move agencies, it's not the be-all, end-all resolution of your problems and salvation. What's going to happen is the same issues you're facing here, you're going to face there. So like, oh, my recruiters aren't very good here. Huh? Guess what? You go somewhere else and the recruiters are even worse maybe. Right? So these are issues that are going to transpire no matter what. I hope this was a helpful um, kind of a kick in the butt because that's what my podcast is here to do. I'm not here to mince words. I'm here to tell you about what you really need to do if you want to be one out of hundreds of people in the ranking leagues. This is what it takes. Yeah, there's only one or two or three or four people every single year that hit that list and can maintain their spot on that ladder. And every single year I was able to do that because I gave a shit about this job. I cared about my dignity. I had to do this to survive politically. It's not a choice. If you want to succeed, if you have big dreams, you have to take advantage of every single opportunity given to you and maximize it and sacrifice in the years that you can sacrifice. I don't want to be sacrificing when I'm 50 years old. I'll tell you that much. I don't even want to be sacrificing when I'm 40. That's why I busted my ass in my 20s. And I'm still kind of sort of busting my ass in my 30s, right? So the whole point is to take a no excuses mindset to recruitment so that you're not wasting your own damn time and that you get the most out of this business. All right, I hope you like this podcast today. As always, drop me a line. Send me a note if you have any questions, any topics that you want me to cover. And if you have the time, please, please, please do take a moment to review this podcast. Again, I've been begging for reviews. You should, you should definitely know that it was coming. Please do review this podcast. Five stars only, please. And I am eager to make more for you as always.